Did you know that anything you can do with an animation player in Godot, you can do in a script? I'll show you. Only if you want to know how. If you, if you don't if you don't care, why the why the hell did you click on this video, dude? I'll show you. A picture is worth a thousand words, right? Let's let's get right into it. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. So we have an animation player, right? Um, if you uh, if you haven't watched my other video on animation player, you might want to go watch that first. Maybe it's, it's all about different types of tracks. Um, maybe you already know about tracks and you don't care. Then, you know, skip it. But you probably want to know that stuff. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna explain. I don't like to repeat myself. Okay, so. Don't ask me to repeat myself. <laughs> okay, so what are we doing? Let's attach a script. Animationplayer.gd. Um, so I will. I will. Uh, uh, just just this once, just for you. I'll repeat myself this once. Let's uh, before we before we get into the scripting stuff. Let's make a new animation. Let's make a sprite. Let's give it a little texture. Resources, sprites, objects, uh, pair of cups, and diamond. Let's go ahead and give him two H frames. And, oops, yeah, we will want to save this scene. Animation player script example. Let's put him right in the middle. And let's make him sparkle. Make an animation. Keyframe zero. Do not create reset track. Keyframe five. Loop. Go. Ooh, he's sparkling. Okay. So you know how to do that. That's that's the most basic animation I could possibly do. Um, we don't have to do it that way. What if what if we uh, what if we don't care about uh, what if what if we uh, want to change? We're gonna make this all at runtime. We're not gonna um, we're not gonna know what we want, what texture we want to do. We're not gonna know how uh, what the what the timing we're gonna want is. Let's see if we can make that new animation just like we just did right now, except we're gonna do it in a script. You can, you can. I'll show you how. I'll show you. I'll show you how. Just be patient. What's the first thing we did? Add animation, right? Name. Script animation. Same thing as this. Same exact thing. That's just a method. But what does this say? Too few arguments for add animation call. Expected at least two. What did we want? What did it want? It wanted a name and an animation. So this is the point where if you didn't watch my resources video, maybe you should go watch my resources video because then you would know that animations are a resource. New anim. And I didn't go over script, working with resources with scripts, but I think this is a good example. I think... Uh, You'll, you'll figure out, as we go, how to deal with resources as scripts. It's pretty easy. Any kind of resource, you can just refer to it in GDScript by its name. And to make a new one, you do dot new. And now we can say script animation. Let's call it, let's call it glitter. Let's make it, let's, let's use actual names. <laughs> use actual names. Don't name everything uh, A, B, C, D, E. You're better than that. Um, okay, so now look at that. We have it. We have an animation. You know what? Let's try it out. I want to give some advice to everyone. Old and young, new and experienced. Run your code. Run it all the time. Run it constantly. Make sure it works. If you're sitting and you're like 
uh, coding, you code for three hours and you think you're super in the zone and you're like, you're, you're blasting out code and then you don't run it and then you run it after those three hours, you're going to be, you're going to be sad. It's not going to work and you're going to have no idea why could have been any of the things you did in those three hours. Run it all the time. We haven't done enough for this to do anything. You can see it's just sitting there. It's not animating. I deleted that other animation, right? Did I? No, I left it. Okay. Um, but it's not running. We haven't we haven't told it to play at all yet, so it's just sitting there. Um, let's tell it to play though. Let's let's say it's it's not going to play ours, but we're going to tell it to play. Play new anim. Now it's playing. It's glittering. Great. Just like when we do in the editor. Same exact thing. When you hit that, when you hit play, then it glitters. Same thing with the script. And I'm sure you've used, you have to have used this. This is the only way to make it play at runtime, right? So um, you have to have used that to get things to play. But now you know you can also just add a new one. Um, right now, it doesn't do anything yet. We haven't told it to play. We've added it, but it doesn't have any tracks. It doesn't have these keys. What do we do with this? How do we get it to? How do we? How do we do the same thing we did here? How did? How did we do this in the first place? Um, in our case, I went over here and clicked on these keys. But we also learned that the other way to do it is to click Add Track, and then you pick the type of track you want. You pick the node you want to, the path to the node, and then you pick the um, the thing you wanted to animate, which in our case is frame. And then you can right click and do insert key, and you can right click and do insert key, and you can scoot them around. You can tell this one to be zero, and this one to be one. And we've created the same thing, except we did it in a little different way. It's a little less convenient, um, but these are shortcuts. This is the this is the way that I think tells you more about what's going on in the background. Um, and you know, you're going to use the shortcuts a lot. Like the, you know, you're not going to do that way very often. But uh, it is it's it's uh, something you should know. So you should know what's going on in the background because. Knowing what's going on in the background lets you do it with a script. And then you only have to do it once. And you don't have to be clicking all those damn little keys all the time because it actually gets pretty old if you have to make 100 different animations. Um, OK, so what was the very second thing we did? We added a track. But we're not adding the track to the animation player. We're adding the track to the animation. And remember, an animation is a resource. The thing that stores the tracks is the resource. Add track. What kind of track do we want? What do we have? Now, this is this is a little obnoxious. Property track type value. They they sometimes are not consistent with their names. It's like how these are called functions here, but then over here it's call method and not call function. So that's a uh, kind of interchangeable um, words, but it does get a little confusing, you know. Um, okay, so we added a track. I want to be showing you. We we can't. We can still run it. We can still run the run the code, right? It still looks the same. It's not doing anything different. We don't see anything relating to this new animation we made, even though we added it to the player. You can't see it. We could play it. We could play it like this with glitter. Like I can show you that. Let's 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 show that. Yeah, instead of this. Um, but as you might suspect, it's not going to do anything because we didn't add any tracks, or we added a track, but we added no keys. So it's no real way to tell what's going on. Actually, there's one way to tell. There's one way to tell what uh, what animation is playing, even if it doesn't have any keys. You can go over here and click on remote, and you can click on any node. Oh, it's not playing. It has, you can see there, it does have it. We added it, but it's not playing. Why? Because it doesn't loop. It does not loop. Ours loops, because we clicked on that. If it doesn't, if we don't click on it, it won't loop. 
and it'll stop. I'll play for one second and it'll stop. So before we get too far, I'm going to do something to make it a little more visible what's going on. If you watch my resource video, you'll know that you can save a resource as a tres file, text resource extension file. But how do you do that in a script? If we want to do it at runtime, we have to do it in a script, right? We have a uh, global, um, I guess it's a singleton that is built into Godot called resource saver, the function called save. And I want to get the hint here so I remember what order it's in, save. We get a path, that's the path we want to save it to, the resource, and flags are optional. Anytime you see, up in addition, just a little sidebar, uh, in Godot's script, in the editor, the resource or the, the, the hints, um, they'll tell you what the arguments are. If you see this little equals, that means that's the default and you don't actually have to put the argument in. So this is telling me I need to put in the path that is going to save the file and the resource I want to save. So I'm going to do res slash slash um, glitter anim.tres and we're going to say new anim. Good? Yeah. Okay, so now run the code. Still works. Remote animation player still should have where did I see that before? Current animation? Oh yeah. Glitter, still there. And now, there it is, Glitter Anim. Now you can see the mysterious animation resource. It has tons of values. Um, by default, loop wrap is true, but that's different than loop. That's a, um, Let's see. That's this. This this loop wrap mode. That's telling it what uh, what that value is. It doesn't have loop. It doesn't have a loop. Um, it doesn't have anything to tell you whether it's looped or not because that's the default is to not loop. So let's make it loop. Actually, hold on. Okay. So that's how you save in code. You can also just save regular animations that you made in the editor. Save as. Let's go to the root. Okay, this is our, that's what it's called, new anim. So I'll just, I'll just save it as new anim. And just like the one we saved via script, new anim. There it is, but we have more data. And there's loop. Did I tell it to loop? Oh, I stopped it looping. Okay, there we go. Save. And there it is. It set the loop variable. Okay. So now we can see exactly what we need to tell it to do in the script. Okay, so this is the one we created. This is the one we created in the editor. This is the one we created in the script. What does this have that this doesn't have? This has a loop, so we need to tell this one to loop. Track type value. We did add the track in the script, remember? Um, node path, blank. This one says animation player sprite frame. So. Right now, this has no idea what it wants to animate yet even. Like when we do this, remember when we hit add track and we do property track, the first thing it asks you is what node do you want to animate? Clicking on that sprite is what sets this path. Something else that is important to know about the animation player that I didn't mention in my other video is this, this property right here, root node. This tells you where the path is going to start by default. So in this case, the animation player's root node, dot, dot, that means its parent. Two dots means the parent node. This um, is a scene, so its parent node is the, uh, in this case, since we're running it as a scene on its own, its parent node is the scene root. So by default, if we just make a track with no uh, no node path assigned to it, it's going to try to animate 
like whatever property you put in it, it's going to try to animate it on the root node, which is a viewport. Um, I'm going to make another video about structuring your project and about the scene tree because that's another thing that people, it's kind of hard to understand and um, it's not that hard to understand. It's just people don't, people don't tell anybody about it. So, you know, I'll tell you about it and then you'll understand. It's easy, easy peasy. Uh, but for now, just know that there's a root node. The more important thing is that an animation player has this root property. Um, and you know what? Let's let's change this because we only really care about animating the sprite. We don't care about the um, we don't care about the root node. Who cares? We're not caring about the animation player. We only are going to be animating things on the sprite. So we're going to change the animation player's root node to sprite. And now when we hit save, this is not updating. Why isn't it updating? If we play this, does it still work? No, it does not work anymore because it looks like it works, but watch this. Whenever you change the path like that, it is no longer going to know where to get that, that, um, that node. So you can see down here, it did show you the path to the node, and now it's looking from this root to find a node called, like, what it wants is it wants you to have that whole path that we did before. So if we did that, now it knows where to look, and it's looking at this sprite because, you know, like, we changed the root. Um, that's not what we want. We want it. We want it to go. We want our new anim. We want it to animate this guy. We add the track. We pick him. We go frame. Go there. Go there. We'll set you to zero. We'll save you. We'll save you. And now, the node path has changed. Um, one dot means self. So this is looking at the root, which is dot. It's looking at the path to the sprite. So now it's saying we want to look for this value frame um, within the sprite, because we set the sprite as the root node, right? So it's looking for any value on this first before anything else. Um, so this is how it's referring to that property. So if we want our script to animate that same property, we need to tell it to animate this. And how do we do that? Guess what? It's so easy. Once you know what's going on with it, set Track, no, track, set, path. Uh-oh, track index, what is that? We have the path over here, but that's not enough because this is just one track, right? Um, let's say we add another track, right? And this one is changing the offset. We can't tell it, we, we, we have to know which, which um, which track we're setting it on, right? Because these could be different paths. This, this path is going to offset. This path is going to frame. Um, so what we need is to tell it which track. And the way that you know which track, this function returns an index. How do I know that? I'll let you in on a little secret. If you hold control and you click on a method, it jumps you right to the documentation. If you have documentation, or if you make your own function, if you click on it, if you're in the script, it'll take you to the your de declaration of the function. Um, in this case, it's a built-in function. Add track. You can see it returns an integer. This doesn't tell you that. That's that's bad. <laughs> it doesn't tell you what the, what the return value is, but the return value is the ID um, or the track index. So when we add a track, we store the track index so that we know which track to use. So now we know that this animation 
whatever we whatever we tell this animation, whatever keys are in this track, they're going to be modifying the frame property on the animation's root node, which is the sprite. Um, let's run it. Run, 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 run your code. Run your code. It worked. It did exactly what we want. Now we've set this up so it's the same. Okay. Still not doing anything though because we haven't given it any keys. Okay, so how do we give it keys? Can you guess? Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Property uh, track insert. Track insert key. Track. Track index. Let's call this, let's name this better. Uh, frame. Frame track. Use nice names so you don't get confused. Track index. Time. Key. Transition. Key is the value we're going to put in. Time is this. And the other stuff is optional. So time. What did we do? 0, 0.0. Comma. Value. 0. How do we know 0? Click on this key. This is the stuff you're setting. That's where you can add easing, I think. Uh, let's see. Transition, yeah. Okay, transition is this. Um, it's called transition in the <laughs> in the argument and easing in the. Can you can you hover and see? No property easing. Yeah, that's that's uh, <laughs> that's rough. It's just the the name of the argument is different, but that's okay. Um, okay, but we're not going to change that. That's fine. That's default. Okay, so now we have a key. Run your code, run your code, run your code, run your code. Run it, run it all the time. What did we add? We added a key. Did we get a key? What happened? Oh, I added another track. Let's get rid of that track so we don't get confused. Because I don't care about offset, actually. Save, save, go over here. Okay, times. Pool real array. There's one key at zero, one key at 0 0.6. Transitions, that's the thing we left at default. Update one, value zero, one. Look at that, times, we added the first key, right? Times zero, that's the, okay, we're, in the we're in the keys, in the keys property, it's a, it's a dictionary um, for the different tracks, I believe. So if we added more tracks, oh uh, no. No, 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 it's just for this one track. The keys then the, the the key the dictionary key is these and then the, the values of them are these. Um, so this means we have one key, one thing, update mode is zero. I think that's yeah, that's a that's a enum that um, I believe that means update mode. Yes. So in this case, update mode means uh, this. The the uh, if I go watch my other video, <laughs> continuous discrete trigger cap capture. If we change this to capture, let me save this, save. Update mode three. Now it's update mode capture. Um, but this and guess what else you can do? You know what else you can do? Check it out. You can change the file. You can just change the text file. That's something I didn't show off last time, but yeah, <laughs> even easier. Now you know what that means, right? If you want to do something big in like all of your resources that you have, go into go into VS Code and do a re replace all in a bunch of files. Easy peasy. Um, okay, so that was a that was a tangent. Um, where were we? Right. So we have inserted a key. We can't see this because you know we uh, this this animation only exists at runtime. Um, it gets saved, but we haven't loaded it. Uh, so that inserted the key we wanted. What else do we have to do? Very easy. Six. Actually, we want five, right? I I screwed this up. This should be a five because we have one second. Um, and 
what's the value? Frame 1, because we have two frames. Frame 0, frame 1, 0 inclusive. And run your code, run your code. One step at a time. Check it out. It went one time. Did you see it? Did you see it? Because what did we forget to do? Say it with me, Dora. Hmm, not enough. Here's one more thing. What is different about this one that we didn't do? This is not set by default. So here we have update mode one and here we have update mode zero. So this means continuous and you'll see if you watch my other my animation tracks video continuous means it's trying to slowly move from zero to one which is not possible. I seems like a bug to me. I feel like since it's an integer Frame is an integer, I believe it should be. Um, I guess because it's trying to uh, go linearly, if you were to like put 0 0.5, that would not work. But it, it probably is doing that in the background. Um, so this has to be discrete, because we only want zeros and ones. Um, so it's another good. Another good lesson about this. Set update mode frame track index. Now, for this, you see over here, it's a uh, zero one. Those correspond to enums in the animation resource class, and we want discrete. Yep. discrete. There it is. Okay, and if you want to take a look at those, you should be able to see it. There it is. Yep. Enum update mode. Continuous. Update between keyframes. Discrete. Update the keyframes and hold the value. We talked about that last time, but that's how you get it in the code. Um, <coughs> we make it loop. And I think we're close. Just, just to test. Just to take a little look-see, let's get rid of this one. Let's get rid of the one that we made and run the code and see if it works, see if we're playing. There it goes. We have done it. And what's more, we saved it. We have it down here. There's loop set to true. Length is one. Let's go over here. And we can just load the one we saved and when you load it, it doesn't doesn't jump to it right away. And look at that. Doesn't that look exactly the same as the one we made? And that's all it took. It's not that many. It's not that it's not that much. It's a little bit. It's a little bit of work, but I mean that's what you gotta there's a couple steps you gotta go through to make an animation track, so there's gonna be a couple steps to make it in code too, but it's not so bad. Um that's the very basic. Okay, one last thing. So remember, that's just property track. My other video, we talked about these other uh, five tracks. <laughs> um, in this video, I'm going to show you some call method track. Um, we can look. We can look at the documentation for uh, for the other types. Um, so see the different types of tracks have different methods that you use to add keys and do all that. Um, maybe someday I'll do stuff on the other ones. For now, I want to look at the method track because that is very powerful. And it's uh, there's just one thing you have to know to make it super useful. Uh, and it's it's kind of confusing without knowing that one thing. But it's not it's not hard. And our, our new way of looking at the looking at the um, Looking, looking at the resource files in a text editor makes it even easier. So let's do, let's do one of those. Um, 
So call method. So we need to have we need to have a method to call, right? Let's just add a script to our sprite. <coughs> um, script animation. Script animation sprite. Let's give it a method. Um, blink. Visible equals not visible. And let's another little quick sidebar. You ever wanted to uh, put stuff into a string, but you uh, don't want to do a big long string of a uh, plus signs. This is called a format string. Use a little percent sign, and there's a couple different um, there's a couple different characters you put after the percent sign, and then at the end you put a percent sign again, and you put the variable you want to insert and it will insert it into the string without having to do like as you know the other way to do this would be uh, plus counter that's kind of a pain actually it, it's like it's more obvious I guess but it's this looks so much nicer um, so that's that's something to know okay so you know we're calling a method now this is such a simple thing that you can just do with a track so I wanted to do something else that uh, that makes it more more fun to use a script. Okay, so let's add that method track to our glitter animation. Um, we'll just call it once, and it'll loop, and it'll it'll every time it loops, it'll turn on and off. Um, okay, so first let's load our other new anim like let's bring this back because we're gonna and we're gonna delete the glitter anim because we wanna we want to be knowing that it's only at runtime. So we learned this last time. Call method track. Pick the sprite. Hit okay. Actually we have to save. I was kind of <laughs> messed up last time. Uh the method wasn't showing up and I couldn't figure why I realized it was because I didn't save. So there it is. So if you missed that Add track, call method track, pick the node you want, right click in the track, insert key, gives you the script methods. Blink is the one we made that we want. Can we just put it at the beginning? Uh, let's put it, eh, let's put it, eh, let's put it somewhere in the middle. It's just like, it'll just start going away. Um, we'll hit go. But you'll notice it's not going to run in the editor because. Uh, this this uh, script isn't running. We can't call the function in the editor. Um, so we need to run it here. So we're not going to run our glitter one anymore. We're going to run new anim. And then we'll see what we want it to look like. There it goes. So the method is running. Now let's see how that looks in the file. So see we've added this is our this is our value track and now we've we've got a new track. Method node path is just the it's not it's not a path to a property anymore. It's just a path to the node that we're calling the the um the function from. Uh this stuff is the same. And then the values are different. Because in this case, the values are just, you know, values. In this case, we need to know what the, uh, what, what function to call. That's the, that's the only value we need. Um, otherwise, time's the same, transitions, all that stuff's the same. Um, so let's see. Let's create that track in our glitter animation now. We're going to go down here, and we're going to make this glitter again. Okay. Just keep things clean for yourself. 
method track. What did we do last time? Method track index equals new anim add track animation type method. Same as it ever was. New anim. Okay, so now what do we want to do? We want to put in a key, right? Nope, got to set the path first. Track. Is it method track set path? No. Track set path. So some stuff is, is the same for every type of track, right? Oops. Method track index. And some stuff is different for the different types of track. Path, all all of these are the same, you know, they don't, there's no difference between a method track and a value track. So this stuff, you're going to use the same method, and then for some others, you need to use a, a method track function specifically. Um, in this case, we're setting this, but, oh, you know what? What's my catchphrase? What did I forget to do? Run the code. There we go. Now we have our basic. Now we know what we want it to look like. We have this, and we need to use the script to make it look like that. Um, OK, so node path. Dot. What else are we going to do? We set the node path. We want to insert the key. This is the case where uh, new anim track. So in this case, insert. In this case, it's the same because the key, um, the key, is this stuff. The key, a, a key only has times, transition, values. The different types of tracks all have that. The difference is in the values that it has. So. What we're doing is we do method track index. Uh, the time, what did we want? Zero? Uh, no, we put it at we put it at uh, 0 0.3. 0 0.3. 0 0.3. And the value. This is where it gets uh, gets confusing. What do we put in here? That's can't put the name of method and all that stuff. Let me show you something. Oops. Ah, Windows. Copy and paste, buddy. <laughs> Don't bother. Don't mess around with trying to figure it out and searching it up. That's why we have T-Res. That's why we have text resource file. Copy and paste. What else do we have to do? Is update mode? Um, it doesn't have update mode. Yeah, because uh, let's go look at this. No update mode. So we don't need to set the update mode for the method track. We just need to give it its uh, we just need to give it its value and tell it what path. And now we are playing glitter. And we hope it'll be the same. There it goes. And it's playing our code. Blinked that many times. Isn't that great? Isn't that awesome? Woo! Think about all the things you can do with that, man. OK. So there's one more thing. See this? This is also very useful. But now we're not doing anything with it. How do you do, how do, you do something with that? You add an argument. Arg. <laughs> uh, let's make it a string. So we know we want to pass in a string. That's what this little uh, colon is for. Um, and let's say instead of doing this blinked whatever times, let's just print out the string. So now we're using this argument. And all you got to do is say, hello from a method track. And that argument will get passed in here, hopefully. There it goes. 
Easy. Right? You learned something? Gonna run home and uh, get this going in your project right now, right immediately? Close YouTube, dude. What are you doing on YouTube? Go develop. Go, 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 go get in your project. Fire Godot up. Get excited. Burnout over, dude. Get at it. Burnout over, video over.